Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some book recommendations from my favorite authors. When I was at Book Bonanza a few weeks ago, everyone got this little notebook in their like welcome bag when you checked in and it says professional book recommender. And I thought, why not have the authors I see write book recommendations for me in this little notebook? So I ended up asking a bunch of the authors that I saw um, to recommend me a book when they were signing my books as well. I didn't get every single author. That's why Ruby Dixon is not in this book because I was just solely focused on her signing the books that I didn't even think about pulling these out of this notebook out. So um, there are a few authors that I did not get recommendations from, but that's okay. I have a great list here. Many of them, the majority of them, I've never even heard about. So we're gonna look them up together and figure out what they're about. So we're gonna go in basically order that I saw these authors. First recommendation that I have is from Miss Adriana Locke. She wrote this book. This is the only book that I've read by her. I'm gonna share before I get into their recommendations a book by the author because if you're like me, like just saying the names is gonna put no recognition like in my brain. Um, so Adriana Locke wrote this book and many others. <laughs> Adriana Locke recommended the Driven trilogy by Kay Bromberg. Bromberg. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I have no idea what this is, what this trilogy is. So let's pull it up. So the first book is called Driven. Then you have Fueled. And then I think the last one is Crash. This is about Colton and he lives on that razor thin edge towards out of control. Whether it's on the track or off of it, everything he wants is at his fingertips, success, willing women, and media attention. Everything but me. I'm the exception to this reckless bad boy I can't seem to win over. Okay, so it's a bad boy romance. My soul is healing, his soul is damaged. We both know the two of us would never work, but he crashes into my life without apology, disrupting my world, testing my boundaries, and uncovering the darkness of my past. I guess it's a trilogy all about the um, same couple. I don't want to like read the summaries for the other books, um, but it sounds very angsty and it has a really good rating. So next I ended up seeing Pam Godwin at the signing and she's the one who obviously wrote Sea and Bruin, a pirate romance. And the one that she recommended is Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. I have heard about this book. I don't know if I'm ever gonna read it. Um, maybe someday, never say never, but it just seems like a lot. All I know about this one is that our hero and heroine don't get along. This girl, doesn't like this guy and he is engaged to this girl's sister. This girl ends up losing, I think her keys and wallet at like a bar or something. And the only one who will answer their phone late at night is this guy, her sister's fiance. And he reluctantly comes to pick her up. And I think there was this like gross dude or creepy dude like hitting on her at the bar. Um, and when she gets picked up, he asks them, oh, are y'all dating? They say no. And then when they're in their car, they get pulled over by a policeman, um, but it's not the police. It's that guy and he kidnaps them and I think forces them to do horrible things to each other in a basement, like they're kidnapped together. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> I know my friends love this book. I think I wanna dip my toe into Jennifer Hartman's books by reading like maybe Lotus. Lotus sounds more my speed, but I have heard great things about this book. So again, great recommendation. Next is a recommendation from Emma Scott. Emma Scott wrote the Full Tilt Duet and many other amazing books that I love. Emma Scott ended up recommending see a Bruin. <laughs> so um, I really enjoyed this book. This is a pirate romance, if you didn't know. Historical pirate romance that's very dark. Bennett Sharp is our heroine in here and she is being hunted down by her pirate husband, but then she ends up getting kidnapped by militia man on the hunt for pirates. Um, and it's kind of a romance with her trying to like figure out whether she still loves her husband or does she love this new guy she shouldn't be in love with. Like a lot going on in this one. There are a lot of trigger warnings as well. So look into that big trigger warning for SA. The next one that I have is from Miss Candy Steiner. Candy Steiner has written many amazing books, <laughs> but one of my favorites by her is On the Way to You, which is like one of the only road trip romances that I like. Candy ended up recommending Wasted Words by Stacey Hart. I've never read a Stacey Hart book, um, but this cover looks really cute. And I have not heard anybody talk about this one. So it looks like this is about Cam and Tyler. Cam is a really big reader. Most of her boyfriends have existed between the pages of books, but rather than worrying about her own love, lack of love life, she puts all of her energy into playing Cupid using her job at the book bar, Wasted Words 
as her stomping ground. So Tyler used to be a football player, but then he experienced a career ending injury that turned into a job as a sports agent. A horrible breakup led him to Cam, his quirky, smart roommate who is far more beautiful than she realizes. She made perfectly clear she's not interested in him. Not like that at least, but if she ever changes her mind, he won't hesitate because he doesn't see the lines she's drawn between them as much as she insists that they're there. Deep down, he knows that despite their differences, they're a match well made. Oh, this is a rom-com based off of Emma. I love Emma. Okay, yes. The next author is Miss Gianna Darling. She wrote the Fallen Men series. Here's Daddy Zeus from Welcome to the Dark Side. And she ended up recommending Fearless by Lauren Gilley. I've never seen this cover. I have never heard about this book. And I love getting recommendations that I have never heard about before. So let's read the summary for this one. This book is about a heroine named Ava. I love that. <laughs> and uh, she left for college with a busted heart and a deeply ingrained love for her biker family. She returns home to Knoxville for grad school just in time for her father to accept the burden of, I guess, MC president and for Mercy to roll back into town looking to patch into the Tennessee chapter for once. Felix left the swamps of Louisiana for a life as an outlaw biker named Mercy, but it was with his family and the retribution he dealt because of it that made him famous within the club. 14 years ago, he fled New Orleans for Knoxville to become an extractor and a bodyguard within the mother chapter, guarding Ghost Teague's family, becoming a constant companion to little Ava. This is a motorcycle bodyguard romance. <laughs> What? <laughs> when she was 17, he finally crossed that line. Now she's 22 and he's back in town as an old nemesis rears its ugly head and puts the entire club in danger. The fate of the club is uncertain, but Mercy has no doubts about his heart. It still belongs to Ava. That is going on my TBR like now. And it has like a rating of 4.25. Like that's good it on want to read. Thank you, Miss Gianna Darling. <laughs> the next author that I have is Shay Savage. She wrote Transcendence, which is a caveman romance I'm absolutely obsessed with. She ended up recommending another book I've never heard of before. This is Spin by C.D. Reese. This one is apparently about Teresa and apparently Teresa can have plenty of guys, but the one she can't keep away from, the one that she's just about addicted to is more than forbidden. With felony black eyes and a mouth built for lies loving him is one step away from illegal but her body keeps overriding her brain maybe it's time to stop playing by the rules antonio is obsessed teresa's the last woman he should touch she's going to get him killed she's dangerous poison the wrong woman except she's perfect and they both figure one more time just one more time one more time and they won't get killed one more time and they won't get caught one more time that sounds so forbidden i think this might be like a professional driver romance but like the summary is very vague but i trust miss shay savage of course next is a recommendation from sophie lark who wrote the brutal birthright series obviously a mafia roommate series that is to die for and she's written many other series that everyone's been like falling in love with she ended up recommending me the bear and the nightingale i know absolutely nothing about this book even though it is very popular a lot of my friends who've read this book five stars or close to it but I don't even know what it's about. It looks like this takes place in Russia and is about Vasilisa. Oh, is it a retelling of Vasilisa the Beautiful? Because I have read like books with that retelling. Vasilisa's mother dies and her father goes to Moscow and brings home a new wife. And the new stepmother forbids her family from honoring the household spirits. The family acquiesces, but Vasilisa is frightened, sensing that more hinges upon their rituals than anyone knew. And then crops begin to fail, evil creatures of the deep forest creep near, and misfortune stalks the village. Ooh, sounds creepy. As danger circles, Vasilisa must defy even the people she loves and call on dangerous gifts she has long concealed in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most frightening tales. I think this is like historical fiction, right? With like some whimsy magicalness to it. I've heard amazing things about this book. Debbie Perry is next and she's written the Eden series. This is Juniper Hill, the second book in the series. Single mom romance I really enjoyed, Small Town. She writes a lot of small town romances and she ended up recommending Manacled by Simlin Yu. This is a fan fiction that everyone and their mother loves. I have not read this one yet because of how long it is. Like 
it is so long it's so intimidating and the fact that it also has handmaid's tale elements put into it oh, here let me see the summary first so what i know about this book is that it's a fan fiction based off of harry potter um but apparently you don't know need to know anything about harry potter before reading this like I know a bunch of people who's read this fan fiction and has never read Harry Potter before and they love it basically this is if Voldemort won the war and Hermione now has amnesia and it's kind of like Handmaid's Tale in the fact that she's like a handmaiden who gets given to Draco and his wife to have an heir so like their heir is has a good magical powers or something like that i've heard it's really dark um but also really good and it's really long <laughs> i think one of the reasons i've also been putting it off is because it has those handmaid's tale elements weaved into it and i am terrified of the handmaid's tale <laughs> like terrified i had to read it in high school as like required reading and i was terrified like it absolutely terrifies me that book does um so i've never seen the show um i've watched clips here and there um because my sister and my mom's watched it and like I'll be in like the same room as them when they're watching it sometimes that show that book absolutely terrifies me and so this book low-key terrifies me <laughs> because like The Handmaid's Tale is no joke like it freaks me out of how that could happen to us in real life um but everyone loves this book I think I was with Victoria when she wrote down this recommendation and Victoria was like Oh my gosh, yes. Like Victoria was like, yes, yes. I can't believe you recommended that. Like amazing. So definitely one that's on my TBR, but not in the near future. I need to get over my fear. <laughs> Next, I have a recommendation from KJ Sutton. She has written the um, Fortune is Sworn series. Um, she was so sweet getting to meet her. Um, but this is a fantasy romance series that's kind of like love square, love triangle with like magical fae creatures. Like I'm obsessed with it. She ended up recommending a book that I absolutely love. She was writing this book down and I was like, oh my gosh, is that the host? And she said, yes. <laughs> and we were both like gushing and fangirling about this book. Cause I was like, I love this book. I read it like at least once a year. And she was like, me too. Don't you just love Ian? And I was like, yes, Ian. I love Ian. Okay. So <laughs> this is a sci-fi romance. Um, probably where my love of sci-fi romance kind of like came from is the host. A lot of people might not know that Stephanie Meyer wrote something other than vampires. Um, so this is oh, such an interesting concept and I bet KJ Sutton is just as eager for book two in this series as I am. Like this book was written in like 2010 or something. Let me check. And like we're dying for the sequel. Like I need it in my life. Oh, 2008, even better. <laughs> this book came out in 2008. This is a romance with like multiple people. It's such an interesting story. This book takes place during a time when Earth has been taken over by aliens. Um, not like creepy looking aliens that you see like on some of my book covers, okay? Um, they're aliens that can fit in like the size of your hand and they get put into the inhabitants of the planet they overtake's bodies. And so they get put into human bodies. And the only way you know that you've been taken over or someone's been taken over by an alien is by the ring around their eye here. Um, and so Wanderer is the alien of this story. And she gets put into the body of, I think, a 19 year old woman named Melanie. And Melanie is a very strong host. She will not die out. Um, and even though Wanderer has been put inside this host, she does not have the urge to kill at all. She is one of the most compassionate beings I've ever read about ever in a book. The dichotomy with everything is just so, so interesting. I love this freaking book. She ends up witnessing Melanie's memories and then ends up realizing that Melanie has a kid brother. Melanie is in love with a man like, and she wants to find them for her. Um, but at the same time, like she doesn't have a like a body body of herself. And then she ends up finding this group of humans that are still human <laughs> that are not being overtaken by aliens. And then she falls in love with this guy named Ian and it's so good. Great recommendation. Next, I have one from Miss Chloe Lees and she's written many books. You have the Bergman Brothers series up at the top of my shelves, but her traditionally published book is Two Wrongs Make a Right, which I really enjoyed. She ended up recommending Something Wealth and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. This cover looks really familiar to me and I've heard really good things about Anita Kelly. So it looks like this is about Lex, who is on a journey to hike the Pacific Crest 
trail and he ends up bumping into a very hot stranger named Ben. And then he just keeps running into the outgoing and charismatic hiker with golden brown eyes again and again. It might be coincidence then again, maybe there's a reason the trail keeps bringing them together. Ben has made his fair share of bad decisions and almost all of them involved beautiful men. And yet there's something about this gorgeous and quietly nerdy Alexei that Ben can't just walk away from. Surely a bad decision can't be this cute and smart. And there are worse things than falling in love during the biggest adventure of your life. But when their plans for the future are turned upside down, Ben and Alexei begin to wonder if it's possible to hold on to something this wild and wonderful. That sounds really cute. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. Next is a recommendation from Danielle L. Jensen. She wrote The Bridge Kingdom, which is a very, very, very popular fantasy romance series. She ended up recommending House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein. Wildenstein? So it looks like this is a fantasy romance, of course. Until an oracle predicted my regal future, I never imagined myself rising above the curve of my round ears. After all, I was the magicless halfling loved by beasts but loathed by every pure-blooded fairy at the court. Well, by all but one. Dante, Prince of Luce, had owned my heart since he gave me my first kiss. If gathering a slew of iron relics could help me overthrow the current monarch and crown his brother to rule at my side, then treasure hunting I must go. If only the oracle had warned me what winged demon I was releasing into the world and that I'd become this demon's obsession. Ooh, okay, this says, for fans of Sarah J Maas and Mary E. Pearson, I love both of those authors. And apparently this is like a new adult romance. I was worried that it was YA, but no, it's new adult, so. I'm excited. I've never heard of this fantasy romance book before. A few of my friends have read this one and they've either given it four or five stars. So I think that's a good sign. Next is the lovely Katherine Cowles. She wrote the Tattered and Torn series, small town romance series queen of small town romances. She recommended me uh, two books. She couldn't help herself. She's like, I can't just do one. So um, first is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Everyone has been talking about this book. This is a fantasy romance book dealing with dragon riders. And I really want to read this one because the heroine in here, apparently she has a disability that's based off of EDS, which is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a sister condition to my condition. And I just can't wait to read it. I've heard mixed things about it, um, but overall like, good things I think so I honestly can't wait to read this especially if Catherine loves it so much and then she also recommended Little Lies by H Hunting or Helena Hunting. I've had this book on my TBR for a while because I think Brie and Jess from Peace Love Books both of them have been talking about this book. I want to read it. It sounds really good. I love Helena Hunting so I'm gonna love her pen name as well, obviously. This is about Lavender and Kodiak. They apparently were like childhood friends. There comes a point where like the two of them are really, really, really close as kids, but their parents kind of separate them because they think their attachment to each other is a little bit too much and could be unhealthy. And so they end up living separate lives for a few years. And I think they come back together because they're attending the same college and they're living together as well. I'm looking at all my friends' reviews on, on this book and like everyone's giving it five stars amazing sign. Next is a recommendation from QB Tyler. I've never read a book by QB Tyler, um, but I did end up purchasing Keep Her Safe, which is her most recent release. It's a bodyguard romance while I met her. And I still had her recommend me a book because I think she is an amazing author because I've heard amazing things about her books. Um, so she ended up recommending <laughs> Priest by Sierra Simone. I love Sierra Simone's books. I have not gotten to Priest just because it's a little daunting as someone who is religious. I have read a few Priest romances is like I'm not gonna say I haven't read any um, but I have to be put in the right mindset for it um, but I've heard great things about this one I don't want to read the summary for this one because I don't want to like spoil myself um, because I do actually want to read this one um, but it has been on the back burner for a bit next I saw Miss Serena Bowen she's written a lot of hockey romances this is my favorite by her this is Brooklyn Air she ended up recommending me a book I've never heard of before um, but this is Breakaway by Avon Gale Apparently this is an MM hockey romance. Okay, so apparently this one's about Jared and Lane and they are on opposing rivaling hockey teams. During a rivalry game, Lane throws off his gloves against Jared, the enforcer for the Savannah Renegades. It's a strange way to begin a relationship. That sounds so good. I haven't heard like anybody talk about this. I love all these authors coming in with the underrated 
like not talked about Rex. I ended up seeing Andy Arndt who wrote and also narrated Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words, um, which is probably like top five favorite audiobooks ever. It is so funny if you have Audible Plus, please listen to this romance book. It is so good. But I went to her table and I had to have her recommend me something. And she actually recommended something. She was like, I recently narrated this book I adored. And so I'm going to recommend that. So it's one that she narrates as well. Um, so this is End of Story by Kylie Scott. I wanted to read a Kylie Scott book, but I haven't yet. And so I might start out with this one, but I love the cover. Okay, this one's about Susie and she inherits a charming fixer upper from her aunt. And she's excited to start living her best HGTV life. But then she finds the door to find her contract is none other than her ex's best friend, Lars, the same man who witnessed their humili humiliating public breakup six months ago. She isn't eager to have anyone around whose alliance is with the enemy, but beggars can't be choosers, and the sooner the repairs are done, the sooner she can get back to embracing singledom. Things go from a little awkward to unbelievable when Lars discovers a divorce certificate hidden in a wall and dated 10 years in the future with both of their names on it. I remember Andy talking about this and I was like, what? <laughs> like she was like, they literally find their divorce papers in this wall in the future. I'm like, what are you talking about? It couldn't possibly be real, could it? As Susie and Lars work to unravel the document's origins, the impossibility of a spark between them suddenly doesn't seem so far-fetched. But would a relationship between them be doomed even before it's begun? Where did this woman come up with this idea? Like, come on. Next, I have a recommendation from Miss Fiona Cole. Um, she wrote the Voyeur series and she ended up recommending me The Siren by Tiffany Rees. I think Crystal really liked this book. I saw her talk about it in a a vlog, I'm pretty sure. This one's about Nora and she is very well known for her specific type of spicy books. <laughs> but her latest manuscript is different, more serious, more personal, and she's sure it'll be her breakout book, if it even sees the light of day. Zachary holds Nora's fate in his well-manicured hands. The demanding British editor agrees to handle the book on one condition. He wants complete control. Nora must rewrite the entire novel to his exact standards in six weeks or it's no deal. Nora's grueling writing sessions with Zach are draining, and then a dangerous former lover has her wondering which is more torturous, staying away from him or returning to his bed. Nora thought she knew everything about being pushed to your limits, but in a world where passion is pain, nothing is ever that simple. I trust Fiona and I trust Crystal. So I'm hoping I really like this one. I read like the red book by her and I really like that one. So the last recommendation that I have is from Miss Nikki Sloan. She wrote the Nashville Neighborhood series. This is book one in the series, The Doctor, which is an age gap, ex's dad's romance. She ended up recommending Degradation by Stylo Fantome. I'm probably butchering that name, I'm so sorry. Ooh, apparently this is a dark romance. This one's about 18 year old Tatum, who is naive, shy, and a little rich girl. 23 year old Jameson Kane is smart, seductive, and richer. They come together for one night, one explosion, one mistake, and Tate is hurled into space. No family, no money, and no Jameson. Seven years later, life is going pretty good for Tate when she runs into Jameson again. This time, she thinks she's better for him. She doesn't have a naive bone in her body, and she can't even remember what shy feels like. Jameson has evolved as well. Sharp words, sharper wit, and a tongue that can cut her in half. It all sounds like fun to a woman like Tate and she's ready to play, determined to prove that she isn't the same girl he conquered once before. A series of games start, each one more devious than the last. That sounds fun. Oh my goodness. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some recommendations by the authors, some of the authors that I ended up seeing at a book signing. I think I'm gonna try and do this for like every signing that I go to. It was so fun and I definitely have books to add to my TBR. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about today that these authors recommended and what you thought of them. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me like a notebook. Is there a notebook emoji or a pen emoji in the comment section down below? But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.